Thank you for joining me today. I am in the book of Job, chapter 19. There's a famous verse in chapter 19. It's actually a verse that, uh, that, that, that the songwriters and composers have taken. It says, I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last I shall stand with him. And this particular verse has been such an encouragement, and it almost, it almost seems out of place in the book of Job. Job is, is so frustrated. He thinks God has left him. He thinks God has forsaken him. He can't understand why God doesn't answer his prayers. He doesn't understand why he's being afflicted with all of the sores, why he, why, why he has lost his family and all of his wealth. And he is, he is, just, he is just depressed. And yet, in the midst of that, we read this particular verse, I know that my Redeemer lives. Now it's important when we read that, that we look at the previous parts of that particular verse, or of, the, of that passage, I mean. All the way back, this is verse 25, where, excuse me, where we see this particular verse. But all the way back in verse 13, he tells us, that he is so frustrated because all of the people in his life have left him. In verse 13, his brothers are far from him. Uh, his relatives has, have failed him. His close friends have forgotten him. Verse 15, the guests in his home, his maidservants count him a stranger. I've become a foreigner in their eyes. I call to my servant, but he gives me no answer. My breath is strange or offensive to my wife, and, my, and I am a stench to the children of my own mother. That's his brothers. Young children despise me. Intimate friends abhor me. My bones stick to my skin and flesh, and I've escaped by the skin of my teeth. Have mercy on me, O oh my friends. And in the midst of everybody in his world and in his circle turning away from him, or at least that's the perception that Job has. He says, but I know that my Redeemer lives. That's the confidence that you and I need to have as well. Now, to be sure, uh, some of that may have been Job's perception. We don't know that his close friends abhorred him. We don't know that his brothers forsook him. And very often when we're going through times of deep distress and depression, our understanding of what is true becomes, a, uh, becomes distorted. And so that may be the case, but we can't deny that Job felt these particular things. Sometimes there is reality and then there is sometimes a perception of reality. And I'm, and I'm not here to say that the perception of reality is always wrong or that we just need to uh, reject our perception of it. Job didn't do that. Job understood that, that these people had forsaken him. That's what he's expressing. Whether it's actual, whether it's true or not, is really immaterial. In this case, Job's perception was his reality. But another perception that Job had, that he held on to with all of his heart, and with all of his soul, was that his Redeemer lived. Now, his Redeemer, of course, is the Lord Jesus. He didn't have a picture of Jesus on the cross in his mind when he said that. But somehow, he knew that he would be redeemed. Now, that word is a very significant word. You know, it's, it's one thing to say God will accept me, but he doesn't say that. He says God redeems me. He buys me back. And, and Job had to have an understanding that he needed a redeemer, not just someone to accept him. He needed someone who would pay a penalty for him or pay a price for him, maybe is a better, act, better word. There was going to be someone who would redeem him, pay that price for him. And of course, that one was one who is standing in the heavens, 
who is standing on his behalf. Later on, the New, the New Testament's going to tell us that, that that one would be our advocate who would stand before the throne of God. And he would not just be our advocate, but he himself would be our redeemer. That's what Jesus did, of course, for us. Job's understanding of that was limited, to be sure. We recognize the limitations of that. But what we also recognize was that he had a trust in something that was beyond this world. And even when everything else in his life had failed and turned away, he trusted that Redeemer. I hope you're not going through the kinds of afflictions that Job went through. Maybe they feel that way even if they're not to that, that degree. But in the midst of whatever affliction you are going through, whatever trial, I hope you can say with Job, and thankfully with me, I know that my Redeemer lives. Father, I pray that you would draw near to each one of us and help us to recognize you, the Lord Jesus, as our Redeemer. Thank you for the grace that you showed Thank you for your strength and your, uh, and your faithfulness. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day now.